Hey, what's going on, everybody? JC in the house. Uh, Everyday Thoughts. Uh, everybody gathered around. Your boy JC. And uh, special guest for me tonight is uh, Mr. Angelo himself. Uh, we've done previously uh, videos in the past, so I want everybody to gather around. And um, tonight's topic is, is dating absolutely into, inside of the black community, you know. JC's in the house. What up, bro? What's up? Good, man. What's going on with you? Oh, uh, everything's good. All Just right. enjoying my off day work today. Uh, I feel you, man. So tonight's topic is uh, is dating in the black community. Absolutely. Um, what's your thought process about that? Most definitely, because it, it's too many women of it's too many women, not just sisters, but even though we talk about the black community, it's too many women of all races who come to me and everybody. Like I like I always say, my late grandmother, God rest her soul, used to say, everybody's not going to tell the same lie. It's too many women come to me on Facebook, call me in private, talking about their relationship issues. They talk to me and tell me that men just seem like they're not interested in going out nowhere, going out to eat, to the movies, you know, going out to dinner, going bowling, or doing anything. Any type of activities, it just seems, you know, a lot of women tell me these days that men just basically straight in the skin. Mm. I mean, they trying to, I mean, they now they just trying to, they trying to cut the chase now and just basically saying, look here, baby, I, I want the skins, you know, and to, to me, that's, that's real disrespectful on so many levels. That, that's, that's almost like, you know, that's not reality. That's something like what you see in a porn movie. You know, you might see a sexy girl in a porn movie putting putting icing on a cake. Then all of a sudden the stud pops up and they start having sex. That that happens. That doesn't happen in real life. That that happens in that that happens in movies. That happens in porn and stuff. That's that's not real life. I mean you have to respect a woman. You have to take time to get to know a woman, you know, to see how much y'all got in common, to see if y'all you know, to see if y'all jail, to see if y'all connect or what have you. But apparently a lot of brothers ain't thinking about that. Apparently, like I just said, a lot of them want to go straight to the chase. You know, you know, the old Netflix and chill thing. They didn't want to go straight. They just want to go straight to the chase. And, you know, I don't get it. I mean, what what woman who values herself and values her body? just basically want to go straight to the chase and be treated as a piece of meat. I mean, if she does something wrong with her, I'm, I'm for real. If she does, she got low self-esteem or something is wrong with that woman. What, what's your take on? I mean, I do feel like, I do feel like it is a, a Netflix type of chill type of um, reality we're living in. Um, nobody really wants to go out on dates. Nobody wants to know how to plan dates. Um, it's not even about dates. It's not even about courtship. A lot of times it's all about pure physical and uh, my thing is, if that's what you want, then go for it. You know, I don't, I'm not here to judge nobody. I always say, stay true to your core values. So you just want to have a good time. You just want to hook up. I mean, the thing about it is just be honest with that person and uh, be honest with yourself as well. Uh, you know, you want to go out here and date and settle down, et cetera. Just um, don't sit there and waste nobody's time. If you know you're not trying to be serious and you see somebody wanting a husband or what marriage, you know, just, you know, sell yourself the trip and uh, don't waste that person's time, man or woman, you know. Yeah, I agree. You know, to piggyback on what you just said, don't lead on don't lead on the women who desire marriage or relationship. You know, don't lead them on like that's what you want, and then you know, once you get the draws, you basically go on ghost on them. You know, don't you know that ain't cool at all. I mean, contrary to popular belief, you know, you know, you know whether Bob wants to believe it or not. You know, Bob can say that. Look, I don't know. I don't want no relationship. I just want me some, and still, it's it's still conditions where Bob can just get him some if that's what he wants. But he needs to be up. He needs to be upfront about that. He don't need to be leading women on who you know want more than that. Yeah, I'm all about I'm not having been lying or being deceptive. Uh, let me do a little shout out. What's going on, Angie, Wendy, Lena, Ashley, Jamie? What's going on, Dewanda, Love? Uh, Jamie says sex is easy. 
easily attainable. Instagram, Instagram side that we got, we are focused on sex alone, no relationship or substance. Yeah, I do agree with that. I mean, there's not a lot of many people that actually want to go out here and date and get to know people, etc. A lot of times it's just phys- it's just pure physical, and um, you know, like I said, if that's what you want. Like I said, be honest with what you want. You know, let the other person know, and uh, make sure you have some of the core values. You know, that's what I always preach. You know. Yeah, cause this, I mean, it's it's just too many of these women, you know, saying it, you know, these a lot of these guys on Facebook, all they want to do, all they basically want is to hook up, basically want to send them dick pics, and you know, want to just, you know, cut straight, you know, to the chase and hook up and, and you know and have sex. I mean, who do, I mean who does that? I mean, really, who does that? I mean. I have more respect for a brother if he just basically, basically, if he just basically went and bought him son from a prostitute, for real. I'd have more respect for him. Oh, for real. I would have more respect for him if he did that than out there, you know, destroying women who want relationships and marriage, you know, and, you know, and taking advantage, you know, and playing with their minds and their bodies. You know, I'd have more respect for him. He just went on and bought him a prostitute instead of, you know, leading women on who, you know, want a family, who want a relationship, who want marriage, who want a foundation. Now, here's one of the biggest things I hear black men say, because I not only talk to a lot of sisters, I have conversations with a lot of brothers too. Okay, a lot of brothers tell me this here. They say, well, to be honest with you, I ain't a lot of a lot of these black women out here today, they really not, they really not worthy of marriage. Okay, all right. If you feel okay, if you feel that way. That's your right to feel that way, but okay, but why you wanna why you wanna do the player thing? Why you wanna why you wanna lead somebody's daughter or somebody's sister or somebody's mother on like you want something substantial when really you don't? All you wanna do basically you just wanna knock you just basically wanna knock boots. That's why I say that's why it's good for people to be upfront, truthful with one another from Jump Street from the beginning. Unfortunately, we live in a society where people don't do that. I mean, people have hidden, people have hidden agendas. Men have hidden agendas, women have hidden agendas. A lot of times people are not honest with each other and don't straightforward not what you want. And that's how situations turn out bad. Okay, just like recently here in Memphis, I don't know whether you heard about it or not, but here in the Memphis Tri-State area where I live, there was a prominent minister who got killed. He got shot right in front of his home. Uh, got killed right in front of his wife. And the wife got shot in the shoulder. When the woman pulled the trigger, before the woman pulled the trigger, the wife said the first words came out of the woman's mouth towards her husband was, you broke my heart. Evidently, that must have been, you know, the sad piece. That minister must have been having some kind of, you know, a pharaoh or, or some type of sad relationship with that woman or he promised that woman something or what have you. That ain't good. I mean, if if you with a good, genuine person who means you well, in this day and age, it's best to go and try to stick with that person, try to be, you know, keep it 100, keep it real, keep it faithful with that person. Because these days and times, you don't know what you don't know what kind of people you're getting hooked up with. Now, see, that woman obviously had some screws to lose. See, and that man don't lost his life over some miss. That woman, the first lady of the church, she don't lost her husband over some over some miss, over some garbage, basically because that pastor wanted him some sad skins. Yeah, like I said, I mean, that's what times oh no, like being lying, being deceptive, do you know, you get your, your car broken into, you get your windows broken into. Anytime you do a woman wrong, she will come back at you. And uh, you really can't blame her for doing you wrong. If you, you're not being upfront, you're not being honest, you're trying to lead her on and stuff. You know, she's mistaken y'all in a relationship, y'all in marriage, but, you know, you're still trying to, you know, act single. You know, that's what the issue I have with a lot of uh, married men that still, they're married legally, but they're still acting single, you know, still going out here, still trying to flirt with women. Like, she got all that out your system way before you said I do, you know. You know, exactly. it's all about being committed to your wife and vice versa for a woman too. You're going out there sleeping with different men, you already committed to your husband. I don't I don't read it all that, you know. Just be single, you know. Okay. 
What's going on, Darlene? What's going on, Yolanda? Um, Eric said, how is dating an obstacle when that's what people do? What you mean, Eric? Be more specific. Uh, Jamie said, the girls are just as bad. We see people in relationships or see good dudes. Excuse me, one company. second. <laughs> and greedy, money-hungry girls. What's going on, Tina? Yeah, but you said uh, the girls are just as bad. Yeah, you're right about that. But, I mean, as a man, you don't want to set the tone. You set the standard as far as where you guys are going, you know, whether – you guys meet up for ice cream, y'all meet up for smoothies, y'all meet up. Hey, man, the man for, you know, can you can't really blame the woman for using you for free meals. You're out here, you know, being reckless with your money, you know, or flash your money, you know, whether it's your car, whether it's your, your job, et cetera. You can't really, you know, blame her. Oh, you're she's using me for my free meal because you're the one that putting this up out there. You know, you're the one that's supposed to lead the interaction, you know, so. You're taking her out, especially so first of all, you know you can't afford then that's that's your fault. Because a lot of women they will, you know, go for the ice cream or walk in the park or smoothies, etc. So it's all on the man to elevate that, you know. And if she doesn't want to do that, then you know that's not a person for you. So but yeah, what's your what's your what's your take on that? What uh Jamie said. She said the girls are just as bad, see people in relationships or see do good dudes. As come up or greedy, hungry, hungry girls. What's your what's your take on that? I do I I do agree with that. I mean, even though me and Asia Farmer bump heads a lot, you know, one huge thing she respects about me, she says I am a fair person. I don't just jump on the men or just jump on the women. I give both sexes equal billing and where they mess up. Unfortunately, it is a lot of women out here don't have a man's best interest and his best intentions at heart. It is women. There are women out here who use men for financial gain, for a come up to try to get what they, you know, try to get what they can out of a man. You know, there are some women, you know, at, there are some women out there who are like that. But like you just said, a man ought to have enough genuine common sense to take the time to get to know a woman and analyze her and you and common sense can rule you can pretty much tell whether or not that woman cares something about you or whether she's just out there you know basically use you because okay he's talking he was one thing he talked about was the price of dates that was a good point he made up if you enjoying the company a great date doesn't have to cost a lot of money Hmm. One of the best, one of the best dates I ever went on in my life was when I was dating the older lady who was a pharmacy accountant. The very first date me and her went on, we went out to eat to this to this real nice uh to this real nice Chinese restaurant. We went out to, you know, and I took her to this plate, you know, this this local play that Rhodes College had put on. And the tickets were not, the tickets were not expensive at all, you know. I had bought the tickets in advance and everything, and the play, the college production play, it was real nice. Cause both of us, that's one big thing we had in common. Both of us love, you know, stage play productions, like both of us love community theater. And that was one of the nicest dates I had ever been on. And I promise you, I didn't spend no more than $50. And that, and that was a real nice day. Anytime a woman tries to measure you about how much you can spend on her or what kind of car you driving, if you're driving a late model car or just anything that's superficial, that's not somebody real. That's not somebody genius. That's someone plastic. That's somebody who's superficial. That's somebody who you don't want to deeply involve yourself with. Brothers need to have enough common sense to know whether or not a woman truly cares about them or if she's just pretty much looking for a come up, you know, after what, you know, after what she can get. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You know, I mean, so there are women that do use men for free meals, but you can alleviate a lot of that if you stick with the head on your shoulders and not between your legs, because a lot of times you 
Hold on one second. Oh, yeah. I mean, I'm saying you see the red flags, and um, because you're not thinking with her head on your shoulder, you don't really know what's going on with her, you know. Or you see, you see, you see she's on some BS, but it's like, okay, I'm gonna let that pass. Cause a lot of times we you put up a lot of stuff on the front end of dating, and we won't say much, um, just so we don't want to, you know, we want to be on her good side. We don't want to crack any shells, you know what I mean? So there are women that do use men, but you can, a lot of that can be alleviated if you actually think logically and actually take the time to talk to her and get to know her a little bit, then you can kind of measure, you can kind of weave out the one that just wants you for your money or just resources, et cetera, you know, um, for, as opposed to the ones that actually want to be with you. It doesn't matter like where you, where y'all go, et cetera. Cause y'all just focus on the moment. Y'all just focus on uh, the time, the experience, you know, you're not worth focused on who pays it, who pays that, or how much does the bill was. You're more, you're more focused on the, on the interaction and the conversations more than anything else, you know, and the time spent. I agree with Tina Chris's comment that she's saying the most memorable date was inexpensive. We had Popeye's chicken, Hennessy, sat by the lake, and talked all night. It, those, actually, those are some of the best dates. You know, if you sit somewhere and y'all talk all night, that's a that's a beautiful getting to know you stage. So actually, those she's right. Those are some of the those are some of the best dates. Really, the explicit bling bling kind of stuff. Five star restaurant. You got to be riding in a limousine and all it. That just show. That show me. That ain't got nothing to do with what's in here and in here and getting to know a person. That has nothing. That has nothing to do with that. And one good point you brought up, Jonathan, there are a lot of women out there, there are a lot of good women out there who are getting cheated out of relationships because, you know, they they may not be over glamorous, look a certain way, they ain't got that, they don't have that Kim Kardashian, that Cardi B type look. I mean, but they still some, but still they're some, they some good solid women and they would make the right man a great woman or a great, you know, wife and would treat him right, you know, if he treated them right. You know, but unfortunately, we live in a society where men are visual creatures. And women are more visual. Women are more visual than we get them credit for, too, because that's all I hear on Facebook, talk, women talking about, you know, whether or not that dude is fine and all of that. So, you know, women are visual creatures, too. Sometimes it's not all about the visual. It's about, you know, it's about a person's heart. It's about a person's character. And then I hear people say, well, I'm not gonna, I ain't gonna give it nobody who I'm not attracted to. I'm not gonna give, I'm not gonna give, I'm not gonna live with somebody who I'm not attracted to. So you know what? Those looks will get you in trouble every time. Every time, you know. When you go strictly for the looks, a lot of times, you asking for trouble. No, I'm not telling nobody to go out there and get them a, get them a mate that looks like Herman Monster, you know, or Googly Moogly. That's not what I'm saying. But what I'm saying is if an individual is a good, solid person who is down to earth and genuine, I mean, what's wrong with at least talking to that individual, getting to know that individual, giving that individual a chance? I mean, we are caught up in so many European societal images. That's why, you know, we can't get out. That's why black men and black women, that's why we can't get out, we can't get the relationship thing straight. You know, you know, just goes back to what our topic is saying. It's got to the point now. Brothers don't even want to date. Brothers don't even want to date sisters no more. They want to just, you know, cut straight to the chase and, and hit the draws. You know, I don't... I don't know how we went from being kings and queens to that. I I don't. <laughs> yeah, I agree. What's going on, Denise? What's going on, Remy? Uh, Lakeisha? Uh, hold on. What? All right. All right. Ms. Hightower said, both, be sincere on both ends. Money is not a change between a man and woman. It is a typical expense when you go go out. Stop equating the cost to the date, entitlement to the person. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. You want to really um, focus on the person, focus on the experience, focus on the moment. You don't want to focus on how much you has got to pay and et cetera, you know. 
you really want to just enjoy the moment and just live live free because that time that y'all spend is very limited and uh, you just wanted to to make it make it feel uh, everlasting, you know. Oh, excuse me, one minute, brother. Okay. So yeah, like I said, they they absolutely. I mean, sometimes it is. I mean, for some dudes, but you know, a dude aren't really trying to take you out, not trying to get to know you. Then, like I said, you gotta raise your standards up because there are dudes that will take you out. Um, they will show you around town. They will make you meet his parents, essentially. But you gotta have the kind of standards, the type of willpower, the kind of focus to want that out of a man to demand it out of a man too. You know. What's going on, Justin? What's going on, Jalene? Um, the teacher said I stopped dating because it can be it can be going great until they open their mouth. Oh, that's funny. Why you said that? But yeah, like I said, a lot of times you know, dudes are not you know, people will say, Oh, why is dating dating dead? Why is courtship dead? It's not dead, it's just not required. That's all. I mean, your your standards are too low, you're not really having no kind of sense of who you are if you keep allowing, you know, dudes to, you know, give in you and not you know, take it seriously, you know, you have to put the anger with the arrow yourself, yeah. too. You know, you can't just point out the dudes, because dudes are only going to do what you allow them to do, you know. Um, you know how you do. But yeah, the nice topic is, is dating obsolete? I mean, is it necessary why do you know, refer to Netflix and chill, or, you know, is dating necessary? You know, uh -huh. One thing too I wanted to add on is um a lot of a lot of dudes, you know, gonna sit there and take a woman seriously and she's you know dealing with a whole bunch of dudes. She's just like fuck taking you out, I want to get to know you. It's like what's the purpose of me getting to know you and you still talking to like four or five of the dudes, you know, like what's up with Mrs. That, you know? What's the point of my conversation? Cause I make sure my time is limited whoever I'm out with. You know, my time and stuff, so you know, it's really prevalent, you know, who I spend my time with, you know. <laughs> why, why do you say it feels uh, absolute to you, Tina? Why, why do you feel that Okay, but Hightower said, be honest, you can't tell if she really interests her or just a meal. Um, I mean, it all depends, you know, if it is just a meal, then, you know, you have, you, you're the one that's gotten the, the interaction as a man. You're the one telling her, hey, let's meet up here. You know, you're supposed to be meeting up. So you're the one that's guiding the situation. So she, you're, like I said, if she's taking you for your money, then that's on you because you don't have to go on these fancy days to try to press them. This, this, hey, thank you. And like I said, you don't, you don't have it. You don't have it. Then you don't need to be acting like you don't need to be faking it. Like that's not cool. Like, no, that's, that's right. Like, look, brothers, and, I, and I'm sorry, but if y'all too, if you are too stupid to realize to have common sense to know whether or not a woman is using you or whether or not she's genuinely, in, genuinely interested in you, if you can't tell the difference between those two, brother, you don't need to be in a relationship for real. I mean, I know it's some. I, I mean, I know it's. I understand. There's some women out here that's some good actresses, you know, they can play their role and what have you. But, you know, over a certain amount of time, you're going to be able to tell whether or not a woman's really interested in you or whether she just wants whatever she can get out of you. You, you I mean, you, you're you going to be able to tell it. Yeah, and the thing, too, is a um, couple of women I've dated, and they probably have their own. A lot of them, they're independent, so it's not like I have to worry about all that. They don't, and sometimes they don't really mind paying, you know, it's, like all this struggle with a lot of dudes having with dating, I really don't see it on my end. You know, I could be wrong, but you know, since I have, so I know who I am, so I have an identity. I don't really put it with, with nonsense. That's that's what I, that's what I see. You know, we, guys complaining about women, free meals, free meals. It's like, I mean, you gotta look in the mirror. Like, would you, what would you really gonna do for this woman? Would you really wanna, you know, protect her, provide for her, cover her, etc.? Or what are you just trying to date just to try to see if you can get some? Get some skin, you know. So, in the day, you know, you're mad at her, but at the same time, you were trying to, you were trying to go over, you were trying to get over on her too. So, you know, wrong, wrong don't make two right, two wrongs don't make a right, you know. No, they don't. 
you know, dudes getting upset. Oh, okay, okay, she's not giving me no no booty because I took her out. I'm like, you're not entitled to her body. You know, if she wants to have sex with you, she'll have sex with you. But you're you're not entitled to her body just because you took her out on a date. You know. Excuse me, yo. You're right. A lot of uh, a lot of brothers do feel like they entitled to a woman's body just because they don't took her out. Just because you don't took a woman to the movies or don't took her out to dinner, I don't care if you don't spend a thousand dollars on her. That don't make you automatically entitled to her body. I'm sorry. It it doesn't. Yeah, I mean you're not you're not entitled. Um, I don't know why I do this. You thinking that, or it's it's like it's like you either feel entitled or you feel like oh, okay she used you. I'm like. I don't understand how she used you. You're the one that pretty much approached her. You don't want to try to make stuff happen with her. So I don't know how she how she's using you. You know, she's she's a, she's a blessing. She's a favor to you. So I don't know how she's really using you. You know, the guy's always talking about using her, but you're using her time and her her body. It's like she she not really getting no kind of return. What is she really getting getting at, getting out of the situation? Because a lot of times, women they can buy their own meals. They don't need a man for all that. I mean, what what's she really getting out of you? At the, at the uh, end of the day, you know, she's not really getting much out of you. So you just going on a date. But you could have blew twenty, thirty dollars going on, you know, buying you a pair of shoes or a nice shirt. You know, it's like that's nothing compared to how much time and how much effort she has to put into, you know, to, into the relationship. If, if it do become a relationship, uh, Nick Brimby said Netflix and chill is a new dating system. No, nah, it, it's more, it's more so a blockbuster. No, it's like, not. The blockbuster, blockbuster. That's the, that's what the new, that's what this generation is all about. Blockbuster and chill. <laughs> yeah, Netflix and yeah, Netflix and chill is a new dating system. If you cheat and don't value yourself, and you allow your body to be compromised, then that is the dating. That is the dating system. But if you have, but if you have standards, if you are a man or a woman with standards, then Netflix and chill is not even in the equation. <laughs> and not saying that there's anything wrong with Netflix and chill, but to me, Netflix and chill, that's an in-home date for an established couple who don't get, who don't took time to know each other, and they've been together for a while, and those two genuinely care about each other. That's what a Netflix and chill type date is designed for an established couple who's been together for a while. Not somebody who just met last week or week before last no the net netflix and chill is not for that that's not what netflix and chill is for all right justice says so why she go there and she can buy her own food oh my gosh you the man you so you don't want to invite her out you supposed to pay okay that's how i look at it you know i don't care that's the first date there's nothing wrong with her offering to pay but the man's supposed to pay you know that's how that's how i was raised that's no that's it no yeah i i agree with you on that jonathan if i if I ask a woman, if I ask a woman out and she's sweet enough to accept, no, I'm supposed to pay, you know. If I'm the one who asked her out, I'm I'm supposed to pay. Now if, later on during time, if we if we get along well and everything and we decide to form a relationship, you know, yeah, and I ain't nothing wrong with us taking turns of fairness and balance in a relationship. But First, second, third date like that, early in the dating stage, if I ask her out and she accepts, I'm supposed to pay. Yeah, that's what I believe too, man. I'm supposed to pay at least the first date. Y'all relationship and y'all can go 50-50. But in the beginning, the man's supposed to pay. Like there's no discussions, no arguments. There's no like who's supposed to pay, you know, or you know, you're supposed to go in, she's not supposed to go in her purse for nothing the first date, you know. I don't even believe in that. Even to me, I feel I feel very insulted if you actually went to your purse and actually wanted to pay for a meal. Like I feel very offended and stuff. I really wouldn't. I would too. I would feel I would feel less. I would feel less than a man. I mean, I don't and want a woman paying for that. That would take. I make decent money. money. I can I can pay for a date. That would take a huge hit on my ego. I ain't even gonna. I ain't gonna lie. I'd be like, I can't even go home. Like, are you serious? I really allow her to pay for this deal. Like. I can't even live myself. I would even feel right. I would even feel right eating that meal. I I would, you know. I you know, real kings, real kings pay. Yeah, you know I mean, real, real kings pay for it. Pay for a date. Hey, my beautiful little sister Remy. Remy you know, was saying, had... you know, oh, go on. she made a comment. She made a comment that it's sad that it's gotten to this point. You know, 
in the dating game, which it is, and I'm going to piggyback on something Remy said, and I want to piggyback on something Asia Farmer always says. Asia Farmer is real adamant about the black man taking accountability for his own actions, which she is right about. But like I was like I was saying, uh, John, like I was telling you before, I went to go tend to my mother. We live, we are, we are African Americans who live in here in a European program society. I mean, we was kidnapped, brought over here against our will. This system was not designed by us in any sort of way. This system most definitely was not designed for us. A lot of what we seeing is European program. That being said, I'm I'm saying this. This is the direction I'm going. Sex is like has become like one of the quote unquote evils that the white male dominated society has programmed into all people's minds and it's just made it just a necessary must part of culture. Everything is everything is centered around sex. Take the porn industry. The porn industry is a multi-billion dollar industry. Okay. A young man can't even look, a young man can't even open up a car sales magazine and buy a car without some sex. Yes. It'll have a picture of the car in the magazine when the young man opens it up, opens it up. but it'll also have a sexy woman in a bathing suit laying on top of the car. That's an evil program form of slavery. That ain't got nothing to do with the car. That's programming into that ma- that's programming into that young man's man that not only does he want that car, he want a sexy woman like the one sitting on top of the car. So you see what I'm saying? Yeah, like sex I said. Is, sex is programmed into people's minds. Yeah, like I said, I do a lot of that with advertising and stuff. But like I said, I mean, just because you go out on a date does not mean you're entitled to her body. Um, like I said, you're supposed to enjoy this, enjoy the time, enjoy the experience, and um, if it happens, cool. If it doesn't happen, cool. Don't let yourself up because the idea is to collect data and get to know that person, you know. And uh, don't really worry about that. And your trust, your your dates will go a lot more successful. You just put that on the back burner. You actually, want to sit down and talk to her and get to know her and stuff. So that's my little advice right there. Let me read some of these comments. Um, what's going on, Miss Watts? All right, Justin said, I never said I won't pay. I'm saying if she has no intention in dating you, then why go if you can pay for your food? Yeah, yeah, you agree with, yeah, I do agree with that. Why I sit up there and waste a man's time, I do agree. I don't agree with wasting a man's time, but a lot of times you can discern her while on the telephone, you know, even for the date, you know, you can kind of see the type of woman she is. So, you know, for you, yeah, you can kind of see if you, you can kind of see by a conversation of y'all. Somewhat compatible, you can tell by our conversation. Clark said, "What man doesn't enjoy watching or seeing that?" Mm, yeah, that's true. But still, focus is the dating. Dating is collecting data. You know, if sex happens, cool. If it doesn't happen, then cool as well. You know, it is what it is. All right. Um, I'm listening to the invitation of open girls in a real woman world. Okay, uh, Marlon, what's going on, Marlon? Um, as High Tower says, sometimes she gives you a chance. Yeah, you're right about that, you know. But as far as, you know, going back to the topic, is dating obsolete? Um, yeah, I think it is because I feel like men don't have, as far as the standards, women don't have the standards. Um, a lot of it is just Netflix and chill, or it's like an Uber dating. It's like an Uber pool. Like, you get this, this person Monday, then Tuesday, you're with somebody else, or Wednesday with somebody else. There's no, nobody really talks about, court shield, meeting families, going to cookhouse, going to barbecues, etc. It's more than just, like, if he's not physically into you or she's not physically into you, then a lot of times, uh, it's not nothing's going to go down, etc. So, what you got to be cautious of, you know, this all dating stuff is like, a lot of times, that one person you're dealing with, they're dealing with multiple people, so it's like, what you're really dating for, you know, somebody has you on Monday and then they're talking to somebody else, it's like, what I just go, why did you go out and to take you out for you still dealing with other dudes. Not to say that it's okay, it's not okay to date other people. I'm just saying, you know, you just gotta be cautious of 
you know, just dealing with people who also dealing with other people as well, too. You know. I want to elaborate on Letitia T. Moore's comment. Okay, she's saying, I have had first dates in-house and had all kinds of fun because we didn't have to put on a show. We were comfortable in a relaxed atmosphere without without destruction. I can respect that, but I would advise that young lady, uh, in this day and time, I wouldn't be having a lot of first dates, you know, at my home, you know, letting an individual know where I lived until I actually got to know that person. I mean, Lakeisha, I'm sure you were beautiful, sweet, wise young lady, but you know, as you know, you know, some people, you know, these days, they, some people unstable, they not, you know, they not all together there and everything. I would, I would just get to know a person before I, you know, had a lot of, you know, in-house dates. That's all, that's all I'm basically saying. I'm basically telling the young ladies to be careful out there. Yeah, I mean, I say women and men got to be careful too because you never know if a lady invites you over, you don't know what to do in the closet. He might have a shotgun and may kill you. So you got to be careful too because you would do too, especially trying to go over to a woman's house, you know. So you got to be cautious of it. Cautious both ways, but men and women, you know. Oh, yeah, you got to be careful. I mean, because you got, I mean, you got females setting dudes up just like you do. Women, you know, setting dudes up. I was watching the news last week where some, you know, teenage boys got robbed and stripped and set up by, you know, by some girls they supposed to be in meeting somewhere. So, you know, you got to, yep, you do got to be careful. Okay, uh, Keisha said, not too many people call out crazy me, but before I even reach to a date, I have to have talked to you on some level. Yeah, I mean, I think it's like, if you're supposed to try to meet somebody online, you want to do a meet and greet. Um, like I said, Starbucks, meeting over coffee, donuts, and such. That's the, probably the best places to meet somebody. You're trying to meet somebody online. Oh, yeah, yeah, somewhere in a public, yeah, in a public setting, of course. Yeah, you want to do that. And uh, just try to see how y'all vibe, you know, because sometimes y'all might vibe online on the telephone, but sometimes face to face, y'all might, y'all may not have the same kind of connection. So it's something you got to be conscious of, too, you know, you know, just for safety reasons, too. You know, don't be riding somebody over to your house, et cetera, especially all just meeting and dating. So, it's, a lot of horror stories out there, so you just be cautious. Make sure you, you know, you call friends. Make sure they know where you're at, etc. And, uh, you know, like I said, you you date to collect data and uh, have a purpose, have a goal. You know, don't just be dating just to be dating, unless that's what you want to do. Have a purpose. You want to get married. I mean, don't just settle for BS. If you want a relationship, don't settle for BS. Don't don't sell yourself short. You know, it's all about your core values. That's why you need to ask the the, the court the, the hard conversation, the hard questions to each other. You know, things that interest you, like the saving and where do they see themselves at, you know. Um, the children, you know, if you have small kids and what they feel about kids, etc. you want to ask the hard questions and see if they're y'all compatible, you know. And, uh, you know, um, Cheryl, Cheryl, Cheryl says it's okay to be alone and work on yourself before you date. Many people out here are broken people are trying to date. Heal and become a whole person before you. You trying to date? Let's go with some baggage first. Yeah, you're right about that. You know, you want to make sure you heal properly before you try to go out there and date. You want to make sure you cleanse yourself, make sure you have self love, self respect for yourself before you go out there and date. And don't just date because you're lonely, you're sad, you want somebody. Um, those are poor ways to reason why to date. You know, oh, by all you means, how you go? How you going to contribute? That makes a lot of sense. How you gonna contribute to potentially making somebody, another person happy, and you not happy and secure with yourself? If you're not happy and secure with yourself, you can't possibly make another individual happy. Man, I, I agree with that. You know, and then if you, you know, like I said, baggage. I mean, both men and women both have baggages. I mean, it just depends on how much how much you're gonna carry to the how much you're gonna carry onto the plane. You know, if you're gonna have a carry on or you're gonna have an oversized bag. You know, how much baggage you willing to put up with. Um, you know, and like I said, according to your core values, according to your your core, whatever it is. Yeah, everybody get. Oh yeah, everybody got some baggage. That person might have missed they created up, or they may have a they may have a 
they may have an ignorant baby dad or an ignorant baby mama. I mean, every, I mean, everybody got some baggage. Everybody has some type of baggage. None, none of us are perfect. Mm -hmm. Okay, Remy said another live idea, dating uh, adequate. I mean, we can talk about that right now. Um, <laughs> real, real simple. Make sure you get there on time or about 10, 15 minutes, 20 minutes ahead of time. Make sure your phone is off. Uh, make sure you open the door for her. Um, you know, you want to have a good conversation. You want to make sure you focus on her. At the end of the day, you want to walk to her at the car door, give her a hug, give her give her a kiss if you're bold enough, and uh, make sure you call her, you text her, make sure she got home safe. So that's just that's just the basics of dating. But what's your take on dating adequacy? What Remy has said. Yeah, but she's right because you know I hear a lot of women complain that. Men don't want to, you know, open the door, don't want to open the doors for them anymore, open the car door for the woman. And like I was telling you when we was doing a lab a couple of weeks ago, I I was out getting some gas at the gas station and I saw a young lady in her car. She was outside her car. She was pumping, the young lady was pumping the gas and the guy was sitting inside the car on the passenger side. I mean, to, to me, that's just, I mean, to me, that's unacceptable, but I mean, if that, I mean, a person will treat you how you allow yourself to be treated. I mean, as long as, I mean, if that, if that young lady, long, you know, she allowed that guy, as long as she allows that guy to treat her like that, I mean, he's going to do it if he feels like he can get away with it. But, you know, but it's up to her, to, you know, to put her foot down and say, hey, if you, you know, care about me much as you say, you know, you need to, you know, you need to value me. You know, yeah. And then it's really sad when you see a lot of women not understand that word. You know, don't 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 even know a man's supposed to pay for the first day. Don't know a man's supposed to hold the door open for you. You're not supposed to seat you down, uh, call you back after the date. Uh, I don't. It's, it's sad that a lot of women don't understand that. Pump you in your gas, in your trash. Just little things. It's, it's sad that a lot of women don't know because they haven't really been taught. They haven't really been seen or shown. Um, and it's just sad that a lot of times. A lot of times, uh, men were not really setting good examples, good standards. So when a brother do try to do it, they're, they're kind of shocked, like, oh, I never had a man do this for me. Uh, even though it should be the standard, it should be, um, it should be the standard all year long, you know, a man just doing the basic stuff for you. And if he's not doing the basic stuff for you, then, you know, that's not a man you need to be with, you know. Hold on one second. What's going on, Felicia? What's going on, everybody? How's everybody doing tonight? Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Um, Ms. Watts said, wow, I haven't pumped my gas in 27 years. Yeah, I mean, you shouldn't have to, you know. 27 years, you shouldn't have to, you know. You shouldn't have to get your own grass. You shouldn't have to cut your own lawn. Um, you know, you really should have to do all that, you know. No, she shouldn't have to. No, 27 years, she shouldn't. I'd imagine she shouldn't have to pump her own gas. <laughs> I don't even understand all that. You still dealing with wrong boy. You still open your gas and getting your own trash out. Like that's not acceptable. I can see you by yourself, but when he's man in your presence, he should automatically should already be a light switch to come on and he's go out and pump your gas and stuff. But see, but you know, one thing I've heard you say though, Jonathan, uh now something I don't agree with you on and I'm gonna bump his with you on. You you be okay. saying that some guys be some guys be whining because they ain't got no game that uh sisters seem to be attracted to the pookies and the ray rays. I'm I'ma say this. A lot of times the guys who don't value women, those are some of the most in demand men, you know, especially like in the hood and what have you. And guys who will do stuff like open the car door for a woman, you know, or or pay for all the dates, or whatever. That type of guy, a lot of times in the black community, is is being you know seen as being weak or being weird or being a simp or what have you. On I mean, unfortunately, you know, the guys who complain about it, unfortunately. It's some truth. It's some truth to that, but 
my take on it is this. This is my saving, this is my saving grace on that thing when guys say that a lot of the good looking women seem to want thugs. They don't want the chivalrous, chivalrous men. Who a person elects to date, spend time with, have companionship with, procreate with, or what have you, to me, that speaks volumes about that person. I'm saying that to tell the guy who complain that the woman, women want the pookies and the ray rays and stuff. My question to them is this. Why would you want, why would you even be interested in a woman who doesn't value you? I mean, why you want somebody who, why, why would you, why you want someone who doesn't value you? You see what I'm saying? I mean, why would you want a sister who, who likes thugs, who likes Ray Rays and Pookies, you know? If you consider yourself a more classy, kingly type person, why would you be interested in a sister who wants that type of individual, you know, a Pookie or a Ray Ray? That's why compatibility is important. That's why it's important that date pursue somebody who you compatible with, who you share common interest with. I don't want no me person. I know my worth. I don't want a sister who's attracted to thugs. That's not what I want. That ain't even where that's not even where my head is at, you know. That's not how I'm wearing. I don't want no woman who attracted to thugs because if I know she's attracted to Pookies and Ray Rays, she's she's not ready for somebody like me. I'm just, I'll just put it like this. So to the brothers who be complaining, wants a Pookie or a Ray Ray, why would you even be interested in her if you're supposed to be a king? Mm -hmm. You know, point blank. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree with you. I mean, about Pookie Ray Ray, I mean, I think they choose their all types of dudes, though. They choose dudes who got money, bro. You know, damn what she do, damn she don't. She dates somebody that has money, she's a gold digger. She dates somebody who don't have money, then she's a bum. Like, why you keep them with bums? So, like I said, it's, it's always a loser situation for a woman. Uh, she don't get blamed regardless. That's what, you know, Asia would always say, you know, damn what she do, damn what she don't, you know. But like I said before, I mean, um, Pookie and Ray Ray, they come in all different shades. They come in guys dressed like you and I, you know, guys working corporate jobs. And there's no different. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? There's no just because he doesn't have his pants up. You may be working a nine to five, like I said before. Um, when we get played by good brothers as well, too. So it's because he may be good, you know, financially. He may be stable. He may not be in jail. Doesn't mean she doesn't get brumbled out. So it's like, you know, they choose whatever they they choose whatever whatever type of guys come their way. And if you're shy, oh, yeah. intimidated or have fear on approaching, then you're not gonna get chosen. So you're not you can't really blame your inadequacy on the women because if you're not putting yourself out there, you're going to work, coming home, playing PlayStation or Facebook, Instagram, etc. Then you don't want to go out, don't want to go into kind of events, or go to carnivals or no kind of events or cruises, etc. Then how can you get mad that she chooses somebody else because you're not putting yourself out there enough, you know? Mm, hold on, let me read some of these comments real quick. All right, what's going on? Christina, Rita, um, hold on one second. Terrell said, there's no one raised him to know what to do. How would he know what's expected? Issue with most of these guys have been no positive role models to teach them how to treat a man. How to treat a man. Um, I think you mean women, but I I think that uh I think that a lot of boys they they have seen their mothers teach them how to be a gentleman and um you know hold doors. But I feel like it's been a previous relationship, previous bad experience that he he really wanted to paint the picture for all women like that, so he doesn't really feel like he needs to go out there and do that kind of stuff. Because either he's seen one of his homeboys get with you, and he's not doing that type of stuff, so he's like, "Why should I do that?" Because it's, it's not, it's not inside of him. Because a man's gonna do that regardless if he's with you or not. You know, it's not, it's not no on or off switch with him. You know. 
Yeah. What's your take on that, though? Uh, yeah, I mean, people are, people are going to basically do what they want, a man or a woman. I mean, if a person's heart is not if a person's heart is not genuine, you know, like I said, common sense is going to rule for you to, you know, in order for you, to, you know, to figure it out. And unfortunately, there are some, you know, un unfortunately, there are some men and women out here who who are users, who are manipulators, who are players and playerettes, who don't have a person's best interest at heart, or who are selfish, or who have agendas. You, you know, you do have to be careful of those type of people. But like I say, you know, that's why it's important to get to know people. That's why it's important not to jump in the bed with somebody too fast. That's why it's important not to, you know, give people access to your money or things like your money or access to your car too fast, you know. Good to jump the gun on those things because unfortunately there are some people out there who are just, you know, who aren't genuine and you're going to have to be a strong enough king or queen to weed those type of people out. And then another thing, sometimes people attract what they are themselves. Okay, I'm going to say this, you know, a lot of people can't find nobody real because they're not real themselves. I mean, if if these guys are complaining about, you know, women just want free meals. If, if you're a guy, if virtually every woman you run into is trying to get over on you, you may need to do some self-evaluation self about yourself. See about your approach, you know, how you approach women. You know, you may need to look at some things about yourself. And the same with a woman. You know, if every guy who you run into, if all he's interested in is basically trying to go to bed with you, you may want to check your approach. You may want to check your delivery. You may want to check how you carry yourself as a woman. Because the way a woman carries herself speaks volumes about how men perceive her. The way a woman dresses speaks volumes about how a man perceives her. And I don't want women to misinterpret this in any way. They're saying that do if a you know if a woman is dressed skimpy or whatever, do they give a man a right to disrespect the woman or definitely, you know, not try to force himself on a woman? No. I don't uphold any of that. What I'm saying, what it's just all I'm basically saying is how you carry yourself, your presentation package and your delivery towards the opposite set speaks volumes about how you are as a person. Yeah, you're right about that. I mean, your dress code, your code of conduct, uh, anywhere you go, whether it's your job interview, just meeting up with friends, I mean, you have to dress accordingly. Um, but that doesn't give the right, the man or woman the right to disrespect you or belittle you, et cetera. Um, but yeah, the how you how you do carry yourself, it does it does speak volume to the way people do come at you though. But at the same time, a lot of women they, they do have a complaint where they do dress modest and the guys are still coming at them sideways. So I mean to each his own. Claude Danner has a comment. He's saying, I'm a complete gentleman, but these women nowadays don't know what it is to be treated as a queen. I agree with Claude Dana, I agree with you. I agree with you to a to a strong degree. Because I have encountered that myself. I mean, but not every woman is like that. You may want to change some of the circles, some of the areas. Where do you meet these women who you say don't want to be treated like a queen? I mean. The brother is not lying, I mean, because you do have some, you got some women out here, Jonathan, who, who basically are morons. You got some women out here who don't want to be treated good. You do got some out there like that. 
You know, that all they like is, all they understand is drama and fighting and dysfunction, you know, a guy grabbing them by their neck, jacking them up by their collar and whatever you, you know. Unfortunately, you know, it's a segment of women out there, you know, that's the only language that they understand. And I mean, and that's sad. But, Claude, you need to be smart enough to isolate yourself from those type of women and, you know, try to check for more venues where classier women hang out at. Because they're like, in the past, like, when I've gone to the bookstore to pick up books, you know, on art and stuff, because everybody knows I'm a, you know, comic book artist. I know this one place that you can meet some really nice, classy women at is a bookstore. You can't go up in the, you can't go up in the biggest, most thuggish, ruggish, pooky, ray ray club, you know, on the worst side of town and think you're going to meet, you know, and just think you're going to meet, uh, you know, a classy queen up in there. I mean, it's, I mean, anything is possible, but, you know, by that type of atmosphere, you know, it's highly unlikely, you know, by that type of environment. So, Claude Dana might want to, you know, double check where he, you know, meets women at, and he may want to focus more on, he may want to try to focus more on areas where it's classier women, you know, more intelligent, more educated women, you know, hang out at, because, you know what I mean? He's absolutely right. There are some women out there who don't want to be treated good. He's he's not lying. There's some women who get offended if a man opens the door for them or what have you, you know, they look at you like, you some kind of weirdo or something like what? I mean, what's that? You know, but you got to stand clear of those type of women. Yeah, you're right about that. That's why you got to discern them and uh, don't let you look at their body, look at their mind, the morals, character, evaluate the inside of her, not just her body. And once again, a lot of men think on their think with a little head instead of the one that shows it. That's why a lot of us make poor decisions in our dating choices. Um, Excuse me, man. <clears throat> I really say the date doesn't cost a lot at all. People make dating every, overrating because they're trying to impress someone instead of being yourself. Yeah, you know, you got to be yourself on the date. You got to be calm, cool, collective. Anytime you got to feel like you got to be fake, you got to lie and be manipulative of who you are, what you're about, then that's probably not the person you need to be with. So it's all about being honest with yourself first and uh, first and foremost. And whoever, whoever likes you for you, that's the person that you're going to be with. Um, Campbell said, personally, I think men these days are not being straightforward when they meet a woman. That's true. I think they don't want to be serious. Just say that from jump, <laughs> don't allow a woman to loosen up and you have them six months into thinking, taking her places, dinner, movies, etc. Then she becomes serious. And then boom, you're going to tell her she had, she should leave out emotions. Women will hate and hold back when dating men are concerned. So what's your think what's your thoughts of what uh Miss Campbell had to say about dudes just being lying and being manipulative and stuff, not being straightforward with with that with their intentions and stuff. Are they saying dude should lie? No, no, she was saying dude dude she was saying dude shouldn't lie. You know, just be straightforward, you know, because uh because she's going to be emotionally drawn to you and, uh, you know, you don't want her to feel, feel the type of way. You know, you're not really looking for nothing serious, you know. You don't want her feeling. I said that at the beginning of the show, Jonathan, that people need to be honest and straightforward. When yeah. you feel from jump from Jump Street, I said that at the very beginning of the show. But unfortunately, not, you know, not everybody is. You got a lot of men and women out here who have agendas and they not, they not, you know, they not honest with they're not honest with people because they, because they knew those type of people knew, if they told people what they really wanted, they probably wouldn't have any dates at all. You know, <laughs> if they told somebody, you know, if they just up and told somebody what they really wanted. You know, if a fella told a woman, I just basically want to knock the boots. Oh, or if a woman, or if a babe, or if a woman just basically said, well, 
hell, I just want to see how much money you can spend on me. You know, if a person was just brutally honest like that, they probably wouldn't get they probably wouldn't get very many dates. They probably wouldn't yeah. get very many. Yeah, but the thing about it is you don't have to lie. You just want sex for a woman. You don't have to sit there and lie and manipulate. I mean, you can you can say it without saying it, but no, you yeah, have a lot of kick it. You can, you can say it without saying it. You don't have to be that blunt, you know. But anyways, let me read some of these comments. Uh, what's going on, Miss Gale? Um, damn, there's a lot of people. Uh, Rita said, "Well, I respect a gentleman who knows how to respect himself and know that he should not be smoking." in a young lady's face while on a date or around her who has her pants and shirt pulled together and wait for a reply. That's what I think. Yeah, I do agree with that. Um, like I said, you got to present yourself, you know, when you're on a date and act accordingly. Don't act like a fool. Ms. Um, Hightower said, are you ready? Are you needy, codependent, low self-esteem, insecure? You attract that negative energy. Yeah, you know, you're right about that. You know, you're always putting in the atmosphere of men ain't, men ain't about nothing, women ain't about nothing, and then that's what the universe can keep bringing to you indirectly or directly, you know. So you have to change your, your thought process, and um, someone will, you know, bring you something, but you have to be healed yourself. You have to be ready for the situation, for the opportunity that presents itself. Um, what's going on, Tori? Uh, Denise said you can't judge everyone the same. Yeah, you're right about that. Um, what else? It's crazy men and women, too. Yeah, you're right. You know, it's crazy on both sides. That's why you got to... I said know, that it's crazy on both sides. Yeah, yeah. That's what Angela was saying, you know. Okay, women to see what they want, too. What did Mary J. Blige say? Bad boys are no good and good boys are no fun. Um. Yeah, I do agree. I feel like we're both... Both, both both genders are attracted to the opposite. You know, we'll say we want a good woman and we'll go out with the Carly B's of the world or women will say, oh, I want the Obama type, but they'll go out with the future, the slim thugs, half of, half of men, some of them, you know. So what we attract may not be what we're, might not be what's best for us, you know. That's just like drinking water as opposed to drinking soda. Water may be good for us, healthy for us, but soda tastes better, so. That's the one we tend to tend to um, grab or, or pick up, you know. But yeah, you see any you see any comments you want to read real quick? Well, one guy's one guy's comment we went past, and he made a real he made to me he made a real profound statement. He said, "Try to be friends first, and that's one of the biggest things. In a nutshell, people don't want to take the time out." try to be friends anymore. Everybody wants instant gratification. Everybody wants to try to hop in the bed. You know, men want to try to hop in the bed. Um, and on the other side, females the same way, instant gratification. They want a guy to help them pay in half of their bills for them before they even <laughs> before they even know the before they even know the last guy's last name good. I mean an established relationship takes time. It takes time to get to know a person, takes time to get to see if you jail with that individual, jail with that individual, see if the two of you get along, to see if the two of you are compatible with each other. That's not the type of stuff that happens overnight. I mean, those things takes time and people don't want to, people don't want to take the time. We basically live in a lazy society where people don't want to take the time to do to put in the work anymore. People want the immediate, they want the immediate reward. They want the immediate finished product. Just like instead of, you know, a guy getting to know a woman and, you know, she gives him the sex off the back end, you know, these days they want it right off the front end, you know, before they even want to know, before they even know the woman's last name, good, you know. It's, it's not getting any better at the in the in the in the dating circle. I'm not gonna I'm, I'm not gonna lie. It's not getting better out there, and and you know dating is becoming extremely difficult. You know, cause it's getting difficult for you know it's getting di difficult for quality people to find other quality people, and 
it's been headed toward this for a long time. I don't know what I don't know what the thing is about relationships, Jonathan. It seems like opposites attract. It seems like if it's a good woman, you know, she got old no good trifling joker with her. The man ain't no good. If it's a good man, the woman ain't no good. It seems like it's hard for that, you know, for that balance. It seems like for some reason, it's hard, it's extremely difficult for a good man and a good woman to get together with each other. I mean, it seems like, you know, I mean, they just say, that should be the simplest thing in the world, but it seems, that seems so difficult these days. Yeah. It's so far out of so many people's reach. What's your take on it? I mean, yeah, I do feel that way, but I think both, both parties are actually scared to actually get the type of person that's into them. It wasn't the end to them, you know. I think it's, it works both ways. I think men are kind of afraid actually get a woman that's not playing games. She's not really using him and stuff and vice versa, that a man actually wants to commit and he actually wants to stay faithful. It's like, you know, we really – we say we want these things, we post these type of memes, these posts on Facebook, et cetera, but it's like once you get her, once you get him, do you know what to do? What's the next step, you know? Or do you guys continue today? Do you guys start getting complacent? You know, do y'all start loving each other? Do y'all start sacrificing for each other? You know, it sounds good on paper. You know, I'm this type of man, but a lot of times they've had that man and they they just used him, abused him, and he went to somebody else, and vice versa. So that that man, he had a good woman by his side, stayed faithful, stayed loyal to him, but guess what? He still wanted to play the field. He still wanted to be a player. He still wanted to be a Mac. He still wanted to. Feel like he still want to be in the game. He still want to get with other women. Yeah. So it's like, you know, we say we want this. When we get it, we don't know how to how to maintain the situation. So it, it's a it's a double edged sword on both ends. Well, some some people don't know how to maintain the situation. Yeah, I, some, mean, some, some, you know, I mean, all I mean, some yeah, some, some some people don't know how to maintain the situation. It's I mean, because contrary to popular belief, if there are a lot of there are a lot of good healthy relationships out there. There are a lot of great relationships. It's just that the bad ones, the toxic ones, get so much negative attention and so much negative publicity. But there are some there are some can loving relationships out there. Yeah, you're right about that. Hold on, let me read some of these comments. What's going on, Nicole? Um uh... Sabrina said most women will lower their standards just to try to try to the guy that's worth their effort. But then guys seem to think you are desperate to the fact of wanting to have sex with, but you're really trying to give them a chance and, and it fails. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of tough because some women, they do go for the dudes that don't have much. You know, they do try to go for potential and they do get burned by the type of dudes. So it is, you know, challenging at times, you know. And then they get with the guy who has money, then they get to hold gold diggers, or you're trying to use a man for a come up. So it's so it's, it's always a it's always a double edged sword and situation for the woman dating, and, and so the same thing with a man too. You know, a lot of times we'll we'll date a broke woman, but then at the same time we don't want to date a woman that has her own. Sometimes it's like she's too independent or she's too dependent on on us. So it's a double edged sword on both on both genders, and you know. I've um I've dated several women who were more educated and who made more money than I did, and I didn't I didn't have a problem with it. But you know, like you say, some men, you know, insecure ego, you know, you know, everybody can't everybody can't handle the same thing, you know. There's some people out there who can't. There's some men out there who can't handle dating a woman who makes more money than them. You know, you know, and that's you know, that's unfortunate because it's a lot of people out there. Their their fears and their insecurities, I'm quite sure, are causing some of these people out there to miss out on their potential bliss. They're probably missing out on a potential husband or their potential wife. So I'm, um, you know, I'm sure that you know. I'm sure that quite a bit of that is going on too. Yeah, what's going on, Karen? What's going on, Michelle, Candace? Uh, all right, let me read some of these comments. Um, Ralph 
Pace said, Rob, right, no one person makes the quick stress of the day easier and Diddy becomes a huge chessboard with weapons. Yeah, you know, you had the right equipment. Um, you actually get to know that person on the phone and you spend some time with them. Then you can kind of design them even before you even get on a date to see if they're worth your time or, you know, worth your investing. Mm, who else? Uh, Campbell said, Justin, how does a woman choose better? A woman starts out acting every way you expect and more. A gentleman, and you don't start to get close to four months into dating. Do you realize, uh, oh my, hold on one second. Oh my God, this that's the happiest I've ever been in a relationship. So you allow your emotions to chip in. And you start to feel loved and you so give it back. The six month, he, he says, I ain't trying to get emotion involved in this. We are just enjoying each other's company. <laughs> Where do you go wrong there? Yeah, like I said, that's that's type of that's a man that um misled her. You know, he wasn't he wasn't man enough to tell her from what it was, not what it could be. You know, I don't have any kind of remorse for dudes who sit there and try to be lying, be manipulative towards a woman. That's the worst thing you can do. It'd be deceitful to a woman, you know. Just tell her up front what you're looking for. Either she cool or though she not, you know. It is what it is. I see one of Denise Smith's comments. She said, saying what God has for you is for you. She's saying she don't think that anyone can miss out on their spouse. I don't agree with you on that, Denise. I mean, <laughs> there are some people. I mean, that overrules to me, that overrules common sense to say that there aren't some men or women out there who have run their blessing off. There are some men and women out there who have ran, who have ran off. Uh oh. Oh, he froze on me. Hold on, read us a relationship and work that you need to keep on working on every day. You keep that love and romance going, but some just stop uh, after they got her. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing, though. The courtship never ends. I mean, you have to continue to date her, court her, and find new ways to elevate each other, you know. You know, I think what, oh, snap. You know, we're not going to but uh, I think what Angela was saying was you missing your blessing. You know, one a one shot deal that your soulmate might have been the one shot deal, and uh, you and you did a lot of stuff to turn him or her off. So, you know, it's a lot of times that that person you that was already meant for you, but you kept looking for somebody else, and you thought that you could find happy in this elsewhere. Cause a lot of times we miss out on our blessing because because we keep thinking we want to be greedy, we want to seem like we want to have more than what's what's out there or what's by our side, you know. Especially for a man, especially when you go out there and cheat and he feel like, okay, well, I got you, but I still want to have some more. That's when you know you have to retire from the game and make sure that you, you know, stay committed and stay faithful to your wife or to your committed lover or relationship, you know. Don't sit up there and uh, go out there and, you know, cheat on your cheat on your man or woman just because of your inadequacy. You know, you want to sit down and talk, communicate, and uh, have, a, have an open dialogue of what – what you're missing from each other, you know. It might be quality time, it might be uh, active service. That's why it's important to know each other's love language, which is active service, love um, quality time, uh, gifts, giving, whatever your mate's not getting, you gotta make sure that you supply that with, with him or her, you know. What's going on, Stanley? Hold on one second. What's going on, Sabrina? Uh, Nice said that was just their seasonal, not for a lifetime. Yeah, I mean, you're right about that. Some some people come in your life seasonal. Some people go in there for the long run, but it all depends on each individual. Uh, Sabrina said God can place someone in your life, but you block your blessing because you're looking past that person who is standing right in front of you. Yeah, you're right about that, you know, Sabrina. A lot of times we see our, see a good person, a good mate, but because of our ego, it's like we want something else, we want something more. You know, we're just not satisfied with what we got. But that's probably the best option for us, just to stay with a person who's been there through thick and thin. But, you know, a lot of times dudes just don't want the relationship. Women, sometimes some women don't even want the relationship. They just want the title. They don't want the 
there's possibilities that come with it. Um, Justin said, that's what I've been told. I've been in some very insane situations, and that's what I've been told on top of being better and Ashley and other names because... Been told, call bitter and ashy and some names because I'm choosing, trying to find the next phase, choose better. Gail said I dated a guy who was a single parent of two kids. He was on a fixed budget, so money was tight. I didn't judge him on his finances. He had a missing front, too. When I met him later, he got his teeth free. Let he got his ticks fixed. He became arrogant and his teeth turned off, total turn off. Yeah, that's the thing too. You know, some people they come in your life for seasons and um sometimes a lot of women they, they do put up with a lot of stuff, a lot of inaccuracy for a lot of men. You know, as far as finances, a lot of women they they will work with you, but your finances is not good, your credit is not good, um, you know, they will work with you, but it's important to, you know, See that as a blessing and not try to override her and I'll try to use that to, to springboard you to somebody else, you know. Just like when you get a job, you don't want to get that job just to just to say you have a job and just try to advance it somewhere else. You want to be there because that's where you're trying to be at and stuff. Uh, what's going on, Stanley? We're talking about is dating obsolete in the black community. Uh, Jamie said, Clark, yes, my point is my personal truth will never be the same else's views. That's true. Jamie said, keyword personal, which means your perception of the truth, which isn't the truth. Jamie said, it is it's my own truth. Why would it be your perception of what I see as true? Yeah, though. But yeah, though, I'm about to close it off real quick. I don't think he's going to come back on. But uh, like I said, to close this out, uh, I'll thank everybody for tuning in. Y'all uh, check out my channel, Everyday Thoughts JC, and I appreciate Angelo for joining me. Uh, make sure y'all share this video with everybody and check out my channel. And I uh, thank everybody for having, for joining me tonight for this discussion. Make sure y'all share this video and uh, everybody have a blessed night. Peace. <laughs>